This jail in the southern Philippines is like any other, with its gaggle of murderers, rapists and thieves. What sets it apart are the children. Their air of innocence belying the fact that they're convicted criminals. The presence of these kids here contravenes all international covenants and the laws of the Philippines too. Yet in the absence of dedicated juvenile facilities, the authorities say there's simply nowhere else to house them. Tommy is 11 and a seasoned jailbird. It's his third stretch behind bars. His first was at the age of eight. Tommy grew up here on the outskirts of Cebu City and plans to return to his family when he gets out of jail. Yet it's hard to see how home will be any better. A drunken mother, a violent father, brawling in front of the camera while their son languishes in jail. Tommy's one comfort is that he's not alone. This friend spent his 10th birthday in jail. Then there's Danny, who's nine. 
he and his brother Joseph were sent to jail with their friend Ben for stealing six cans of sardines. This saga of parental neglect is familiar the world over. The real scandal here, say child advocates, is that far from being rehabilitated, these kids are being schooled for a life of crime. Especially if you consider that BBRC is very much congested. Esperanza Valenzona is 84, but active beyond her years as a lawyer who represents the child prisoners in court. The jail in the city is very congested, but the greater problem is there is no segregation between the adults and the minors. Now these adults, some of them are charged with heinous crimes, rape, uh, robbery, murder, and with these children associating freely with these adults, you can just imagine, I've called it the University of Crime. This dubious centre of learning is crammed with hardened criminals and their protégés. Originally designed for 200 prisoners, the complex now houses 1,800. While it's against Philippines law to jail children with adults, the local authorities get round the regulations by housing the kids in separate cells. Effectively, though, it means nothing for the door to the child cell here is left open at night and lascivious predators abound. So much so that many boys won't sleep for fear of being raped. <laughs> Adult prisoners here are given water to wash, but not the children. They must wait for rain and the crudest of bath days. This is the one bright spot in the children's lives. Classes twice a week to learn to read and write. The literacy program is run by a group calling itself the Share a Child Movement, founded by Esperanza Valenzona more than 20 years ago. 
Since then, she and her daughter Nina, who's also a lawyer, have helped educate more than 3,000 children from the Cebu slums. What we are trying to do is to, to influence the boys so that when they come out of jail, they will be better boys. They will be able to adjust to life in the community and, if possible, to be assets instead of liabilities. Asset or liability, the day has finally come to put Tommy to the test. He's finally completed his sentence and is about to be released. It's the task of a social worker from Share a Child to take Tommy back home. It's to be a heartbreaking journey. So, instead of welcome and celebration, there's more rejection and pain. Soon the whole sorry cycle for this 11-year-old will begin again. Three months on, Tommy was caught stealing yet again and is back in prison with the other children. There are now 9,000 juveniles detained in adult prisons throughout the Philippines. 9,000 children whose dreams and aspirations amount to naught.